Phone's dedicated to the woman who saved me. I once sat next to a woman on a plane. I was reading Kerouac. She was contemplating Coltrane. She asked me, what do you think the two of them would talk about if they sat next to each other? Perhaps how they could unite the two respective halves of the beat? But I honestly couldn't answer the question at the time because up until that moment, there were only two thoughts on my melancholic mind fresh from the debacle that is divorce. One, sometimes love flies flags like a Union Jack, dividing us into colonies, fighting civil wars, and setting each other's souls on fire as if they were villages with thatched roofs. Two, Throughout history, lovers have been used to unite warring villages and kingdoms because it's the only thing more sacred than blood. And no one wants to be the soldier with post-traumatic stress disorder standing there with a sword covered in love. You see, love and war are both closely linked emotionally. Both stimulate some of the same areas of the brain. Similar to sex and chocolate. One will give you everlasting goodness, and the other you should probably stay away from, but for some reason you just can't quit. On the war side, I was the nuclear holocaust and the rebuilding process, healing by spraying graffiti art over the burnt-in shadows on the decaying walls that were once my house, which exploded as if someone blew out the pilot light on the kitchen stove and <laughs> lit a match. And all the neighbors stood around the crater on the block, gossiping about what the hell might have gone wrong. So what exactly did go wrong, you might ask? Well, I cut my teeth on this nugget that we call the Earth. The same kind of nugget that can be found up the nose of the universe after it's walked across the desert for three days. And sometimes it seems like all the universe did was... <sighs> and then there was light. <laughs> On the other hand, like the bugles of war and the bagpipes of Remembrance Day, sometimes lovers collide and the sound could drown out the, silent, the sirens that duped Ulysses. Vibrating eardrums like ACDC on the front doors of Manuel Noriega's Panama bunker, blasting them open like shackles and chakras. And I try to find logic in this yin-yang, but I am just a borrower of buzz, a tag-along at a hookah sitting, a beggar of enlightenment. I try to reach my zen through a poet's pen, making amends for the trends and the choices I've made, finding beauty in the art of the graffiti I've sprayed. And what I've learned is three. There is no logic. Because sometimes love simply sits down beside you on a fateful flight and wants to talk jazz and poetry. And that makes the same noise that Coltrane and Kerouac are capable of making when they unite the two halves of the beat. Making mushroom cloud caliber sounds without splitting a single atom. Hey.